from a small country, bullied by its neighbors. Israel has risen to become a powerful military force in the region. Since the 1960s, the Israeli Air Force has played a key role in defending the country. At the same time, it has proven to be very successful in striking critical targets at considerable range. The dominance of the Israeli Air Force is due to effective training, exploiting enemy weaknesses, flexible approach to design and procurement. Over the years, the Israelis have tried many different strategies to equip their air force with fighters, including buying from France, the US, and even building the planes themselves. The country seems to have found a way to solve its problems with a combination of the two, with great effect. In its early years, Israel bought weapons from where they needed and could be found on the market, mainly from European manufacturers. By the late 1950s, the relationship with France eventually resulted in the delivery of high-tech military equipment, including Mirage fighters, and also substantial technical support for Israel's nuclear program. Mirage fighters became the core of the Israeli Air Force during the Six-Day War that broke out in 1967, in which Israel destroyed much of its neighbor's air forces in the first hours of the conflict. However, in 1967, France imposed an arms embargo on Israel that put the Tel Aviv in a difficult position. The Israeli Defense Force needed more fighters, while also looking for capabilities that the Mirage couldn't provide, including middle-range ground attack. Under these conditions, the Israelis adopted an age-old strategy of simply stealing what they needed. To supplement their existing airframes, the Israelis acquired Mirage Engineering Blue Springs through espionage. Israel created two fighter jets, the Nasser and the Kafir. The second used a more powerful American engine, the General Electric J79J1E turbojet and was once considered the main fighter of the Israeli Air Force. Both aircraft were successful in terms of exports, with the Nasser serving in Argentina and the Kfir being sold to Colombia, Ecuador, and Sri Lanka. This investment has helped fuel the growth of Israel's aerospace sector, which has major implications for the rest of the Israeli economy. It provided an important foundation for the early development of Israel's civilian technology sector. The success of the AIA Kafir has proven that Israel can stand on its own in the field of aerospace technology, eliminating the need to depend on a foreign supplier or aid. Israel continued to invest heavily in aircraft purchased from abroad. The Israeli Defense Force began purchasing F-4 Phantom fighters in the late 1960s and F-15 Eagles in the middle 1970s. Israel believed that the combination of different fighters could enhance air combat capabilities. This led to the development of the LAVI, a light Manteron fighter that could complement the F-15 Eagles.
but developing a completely new fighter requires a huge investment. Moreover, the U.S. controls military exports much more seriously than France. Despite initial optimism about the levy, Israel soon realized that the United States would not allow widespread export of this fighter with its key technologies. On the other hand, the export of LAVI will compete directly with the F-16 and will only exacerbate the problem between Israel and the U.S. In August 1987, Israel decided to abandon the LAVI project. All political attempts to revive the plane failed, and Israel eventually bought a large number of F-16s from the U.S. Instead of pursuing its own fighter jet projects, Israel has recently tended to deeply modify the planes it buys from the U.S. The F-15I Thunder and the F-16I Storm are both deep Israeli upgrades. The Israeli Air Force has also made major improvements on the F-35 to better suit its requirements. AIA has continued to have great success in developing and exporting, including bombs, ammunition, and avionics. Israeli aerospace industry has also entered the UAV market with great success both at home and abroad. And despite Levy's debacle, Israel's high-tech defense sector has had a significant spillover effect on the private civilian economy. Israel's current aerospace strategy depends on its stable relationship with the United States. Fortunately for Israel, there is little reason to believe that this relationship will soon decay. And even if the unthinkable happens, the Israeli industry's mastery of developing critical components and support systems will keep it afloat before it finds another partner. My video about the Israeli Air Force answer. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos. Tạm biệt và hẹn gặp lại quý vị và các bạn trong các video tiếp theo.